Hello everybody and welcome back to WASD20. My name is Nate and today we're continuing our map making. I did last time the mountains and this time we're going to be doing bodies of water, lakes, rivers, seas. So here we go. First off, a couple little updates on things that have changed since last time. Uh, you may realize that these are not the same mountains I did last time. I actually decided to change them. Um, I had done it this way last time, which is pretty similar, but I realized as I was just kind of reflecting and thinking about it, I didn't really like how, I don't know, heavily shaded they were. It kind of got maybe carried away a little bit, and it made the mountains look a little bit too big, and thus um, it felt that my my map had become too small. Uh, that was just kind of my, my impression. I really like this method. I think it looks really cool, but I also kind of wanted to go with something that was a little more ink friendly. This has lots of different uh, I guess gradations or I don't know if I'm using the right word there of pencil shading and um, I wanted to do something that was a little more uh, pen friendly because I'm gonna be scanning this in and want it to look good and, and so I want to do it with ink so I uh, made them a little bit smaller and then kinda did a little more simple hatching style or uh, yeah just a little more simple shading there anyway I know we're supposed to be talking about water but if you do want to see me uh, doing the actual mountains in this one this style uh, you can go to the video in the description and uh, I, I'm not gonna make that one public because I don't want to clutter my feed with just a, a boring video of me drawing mountains but if you do want to see it, um, it the video is unlisted and you can find the link down in the description another thing I've done since last time is I've just gone through and and inked the continents as well with my pen. Today I'll be doing some ink and some uh, pencil, but eventually I'll be I'll be tracing over everything with ink. So a couple principles first of all before we get started on where water forms. Last time I showed off a little of the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide, and uh, we talked about elevations and mountains, and um, this time rivers. So a couple of things that, that it mentions here on page 147 of the Game Mastery Guide is that uh, you want to start probably in the higher elevations and make your rivers go down. And then um, you, know, you want to have the water gather certain places for lakes. Uh, I've also watched, again, some of Questing Beasts uh, videos on, on water, and that's been helpful too. But um, I'm going to be having a river, and so I'm just going to draw the lines for now, and I might uh, go back and make these thicker, but for now... Uh, no, I'm gonna make that a little more squiggly. You know, I've, I've done a lot of hiking in Washington State, where I'm originally from, and, uh, and so I've had some experience with mountain lakes and mountain rivers, and while it might make sense that um, you wouldn't really have very many mountain lakes, uh, because, well, it's high elevation. Wouldn't you have more lakes down by the sea level? Lakes are really very common in mountains, alpine lakes, because um, you know the water has to it, it pools in places. So yes, it, it continues to flow down obviously from there and you have rivers that, that flow out of those lakes and drain the lakes, but it is very common actually to have these lakes that, that pool from the, uh, the snow melt. Another river here. Right now, this one right here, we do have to make a sort of a an outlet here, and I will do that right there. And sometimes you can have even a, a chain of lakes, so uh, we'll make another narrow lake right here. And and these rivers are kind of connecting lots of lakes. Rivers don't usually split. <clears throat> they they tend to flow all downhill, and uh, usually the lowest point is just one point, and it's just going to flow that one way. Uh, however, you do often have uh, multiple uh, rivers and streams that that feed together. And so I'll even do some little streams here, and maybe I'll do some right here too.
I don't like having too many big lakes. I'm gonna make this one a little smaller here. So when they do split a little bit, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have these split or if I'm actually going to get some white out and make it a little, you know, a further inlet there, uh, a deeper bay. But uh, when they do split, we call that a delta, and it, it usually only happens where it feeds out into into the sea, like you know, the Nile River or the uh, the Mississippi River. Uh, but in general, you know, you're going to see inlets, but not uh, not splitting into multiple outlets. Okay, so we've pretty much got it here. So again, rivers, if you're trying to draw rivers, you want to start at the higher elevations and go down. And um, the places uh, that form lakes are the places where the water collects temporarily. It doesn't have to be sea level again, it can just be some sort of basin that's flowing out of a mountain and the water pools there before continuing its flow downhill. This time I'm going to be inking in my, my water. It might change a little bit as I, as I put pen to paper here, but here we go. Alright, so that's going to be good enough for the bodies of water for now. Um, I do know the names of a couple of these, and I'm just going to pencil in some, some things at this time. Uh, this is actually called Lake Marin Hall. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to write it. I guess I'll write it right here. Lake Marin Hall. Two words. Alright, and um, this is going to be the city of Marinth right here. And I'll, I'll do more cities later, but my method of doing cities is going to be basically, almost looks like a fat Roman numeral 2 for, for a big city. Uh, it's got a little flag on top. And for the big cities, I'm going to be doing two towers, essentially. And for the smaller cities, I'll be doing one tower. And for towns, maybe a little house or hut. And then for my oceans uh, I'm gonna be I'm not gonna be labeling them now uh, maybe I will label them now actually I'll just get a little fancier with my labeling at another point but for now I'll pencil it in at least um, this is going to be West Reach C and to the south here is the Silver Sea now another thing I'm gonna be doing here today is um, kind of given my the edges of my coastline some texture and this is something that I've observed on a lot of different maps I actually printed out a ton of fantasy maps the other day and um, so I've got Westeros this is the south and you can just see kind of the I don't know the texture they get the edge and I might do some of that shading too actually um, yeah I think I will I don't know it almost looks like waves a little bit this one you know you can really see um, we can hardly see probably because it's so detailed on a lot of these and my pen's not gonna be able to do that But someday when I do a bigger map, maybe I will be able to uh, This one of Narnia, which I love Has a little different effect. I'm not gonna be doing that. but I thought that was a cool effect, too uh, Let's begin doing that now. I'm gonna take my little bit of a fatter pen and I'm just gonna trace the bottom <clears throat> to do a little shading so for the shading, what I'm going to be doing is just darkening the bottom line here. And I'm kind of taking the same approach that I did with the mountains, where I'm mostly, most heavily shading the bottom right. Um, still the bottom left a little too, but I won't be shading the tops of the continents really. Um, 
I'm just thickening those lines. It gives it sort of a three-dimensional effect that makes it look like it's popping out of the water a little bit, which is not realistic the way a map is or the way land really is, but I think it looks cool, and that's the goal here, is to get a map that looks cool, not necessarily one that's realistic, one that looks good to me and possibly my players. Alright, so it's not perfect, but uh, it looks pretty good. I might go out and uh, make it a little more pronounced at a later time and make it thicker, but I, I like the way it looks. Alright, the next thing it, that you can see me doing here, maybe, hopefully it's not too fast for you, I'm speeding things up, but uh, I am tracing the continents to give it that kind of wavy effect. So the way I'm doing that is first doing one line, which you can see me doing on the mainland here, and then... Um, that line is pretty unbroken, and then the second line is a little more sketchy, and uh, broken, and, and wavy a little bit. And it looks great, I think, uh, and it, you might argue it gives it sort of a, a look of waves out into the sea, but either way, I think it looks cool. All right, so I finished tracing my coastlines here, and I'm really liking the way it's looking. I, th I think it looks really cool. Uh, so mission accomplished. I think it looks good. Uh, just a couple other notes here. I think you know rivers. I might end up thickening some of the major rivers, and you know making them actually more than one line, like uh, that. I'm not really sure yet if I want to do that, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if next video you you see it with some of that. Um, and yeah, next one we're going to be doing vegetation, so uh, mainly we're talking about forests here, and I might label some other geographic features, uh, maybe I'll come up with some names, that's one of the things that I'm struggling with is, well, a name for my world first of all, <laughs> um, I've got like just lists and lists of names written down, I just need to pick one, and um, then name some of this other stuff. Name some of the mountain ranges. You know, I'm thinking this is going to be some lowlands here. So I'm, I've got a couple of name ideas for that. Uh, name this island right here where I know I'm going to have some action going on in my campaign. Um, and yeah, pick some spot, good spots for forests and such. Maybe name that mountain right there, uh, which is a, a bigger one. So... Yeah, that's it for this one, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, uh, give it a thumbs up. You can share this one with your friends. Um, and, yeah, thanks, everybody, for your support and for watching. Uh, if you want to follow me, I've had a lot of people um, reaching out lately on Facebook. So, yeah, search for me, WASD20 on Facebook. And uh, follow that page and stay in touch. All right, everybody, take care. I'll see you next time.